Time for another installment of the Canucks Monthly Report. We're here at the Sport Check location in Metro Town. Joey Kenward with you here with three members of the media who follow the Canucks home and away all season long. John Garrett from Rogers Sportsnet, Dave Tomlinson from TSN 1040, and Ian McIntyre from the Vancouver Sun. And guys, it's a pretty important stretch for the Canucks. Ten games in the month of March at home and including a five-game homestand. How important is it that they collect as many points on home ice this month? Well, they have to play better at home, and I think that's the thing is the Canucks have played better on the road. And even uh, their game against Anaheim, Eddie Lack was first star again. Eddie Lack, first star of the last three games that the Canucks have played. Uh, they haven't set that tone at home. Well, I'll tell you one thing with the Canucks, uh, they've been outshot uh, since the All-Star break in almost every single game. And you can look at the personnel back on defense and they're waiting for other guys to get back into the lineup. But they're just spending way too much time in their own end. But they're getting the goaltending. That keeps them in games. And then some timely scoring. I mean, that's been uh, the hallmark of this team, I think, over the last couple of weeks is that when they need that uh, goal, they seem to find a way to produce it. Nobody thought until a month ago that it was a reasonable expectation that the Canucks might not only qualify for the playoffs, but open at home. So they, ha they have to raise the level of their home ice play to what their road play has been. One of the best teams in the league on the road. Dave, a big reason why the Canucks, I think, are in the position they are in is the rebound season Daniel and Henrik Sedin have had. They've already surpassed their point totals from what they had all of last year. How big an impact have 22 and 33 had on the campaign? Well, they've been leaders. Uh... Quite simply, they've been the best two players offensively for the Vancouver Canucks for years, obviously, but people that counted them out don't know the uh, internal drive of Henrik and Daniel Sedin. And obviously, if you're going to play on their line, you're going to get scoring chances. The trick is to finish them. And Cassian, when he's on that line, he finishes the scoring chances. He's got the long reach, goes to the net with the reckless abandon, and when the Canucks are able to have a top line that plays like a number one NHL line, then uh, the other lines seem to fall in suit. And Dave, it's been such a, a task for them this year because who's the number two center? You look at the team and really, who's the number two center? Well, lately it's been Bo Horvath. Bo Horvath. <laughs> he has turned into a pretty promising rookie, not just for the Canucks, but for the NHL as a whole. Well, it, it, here's a guy who essentially made the team as a 19-year-old because he was sound defensively and because he could win face-offs. And now what we're seeing, especially since the All-Star break, but really since about Christmas, we've seen a lot more confidence in this game. This is a guy who can put up points as well. I mean, the, the, the game the other night against Anaheim, he, he sent out to take the face off with 57 seconds to go and, and you're down six against four. Playing with so much confidence has a much higher ceiling, I think, offensively than what a lot of us gave him credit for. And just as a far better player now, than he was at the start of the season. So you start to project how good is he going to be a year from now? How good is he going to be two years from now? This is going to be a very good player for the Canucks. He's probably going to play at the weight that he's at his whole career. And it maybe lean out just a little bit more and get stronger, if you can believe that. And secondly, he's responsible on the other side of the puck defensively. He doesn't need to be taught that. And the offense is coming now. He's got confidence in his, in his skating and his shot. Pretty complete player. You look at Kyle Turris and Ryan Nugent Hopkins and even Steven Stamkos when he first started and they were all 185, 190, and they still are a couple of them, but uh, you look at Bo Horvat, he's man and, uh, at 19 and uh, he puts on weight during the season and uh, I do too. But I don't play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two, 220 pounds for Bo Horvat, less body fat than when the season started and remarkably at least a step faster. Like, he's bigger, he's stronger, and he's faster. You mentioned Eddie Lack a few moments ago, John. He's in the number one net mining position role due to the injury to Ryan Miller. Same scenario he had last year, but he just looks like a much more confident and composed goaltender. How much has he impressed you? Well, uh, it's amazing to me, and on the radio station, your radio station, Dave, that the, the, <laughs> the argument is, oh, Eddie's going to be tired, and they got to give him a break, and they got to get Jacob Markstrom in and put him in this game. And It's crazy to think. Here's a guy, he's 27 years old. Uh, you want to be a number one goalie, whether it's here in Vancouver or someplace else. And now here's your chance. And you can just see it. Eddie's so excited about playing. And uh, he's on a roll, hitting the post behind him. And he's playing so well. Uh, he's going to go out there and play five nights in a row if he had to, uh, to establish himself and uh, keep it going. Guys, appreciate your insight. We're out of time. Uh, enjoy the stretch drive for the Canucks and their push towards the playoffs. Thanks for being with us. Playoffs. Thanks. Playoffs. 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 playoffs.